Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have an ink how-to video in time for Inktober. And I'm going to show a variety of abstract techniques using ink and wet on wet that you can then adapt and use in your mixed media work and journal pages. This is because today is the launch of my new online course, How to Make and Use Four Botanical Inks. And in it, I teach you how to make ink from tea, avocado pits, walnut hulls, and onion skins. I then demonstrate, demonstrate how to do mark making with items that are found and foraged in nature, as well as a section on some ink basics and essentials, and as we're going to do today, abstracts. This full course is available now, and you can find it by following the link in the text below this video. Now here's the deal. This course is an hour and a half of content that you can download and take with you to watch uh, anywhere. And it's $15. That's USD. And I have priced it at 15 instead of, say, 40 as an experiment. Over the years, I have had viewers regularly ask me how they can support this channel, its free art lessons, tutorials, and instruction, as well as occasional free printables and giveaways. Do I have a Patreon account? Do I have Buy Me a Coffee? Well, I don't have either of these. And after a lot of creative and business soul searching, I don't really want them. Nor do I want to make an exclusive, exclusive version of this YouTube channel with a paywall. Instead, I've made this new online course at a really good price point. And if you would like to support this channel and its content, please consider checking this course out as a way to support it. If this is still not in your budget, or if ink and ink making isn't really in your wheelhouse, no worries. Maybe next time. And stay with me because in 30 seconds, we're going to learn how to play with some abstract ink stuff anyway. But if it is in your budget and you do like making your own art supplies, please have a look and see what you think. Now, let's go make a mess. Let's look at some abstract techniques because this ink and the way that it moves and pools and then dries really lends itself to beautiful, mysterious, abstract work. First, let's look at how to make these circles. They're kind of like whimsical test swatches. This is a wet on wet technique. Often when we're painting, we are doing wet on dry. Wet being the ink or paint or other media, and the dry being the paper or canvas. In this case, we're going to do the wet, which is the ink, and also the surface that we work on on this paper will be wet. So I'm taking some water with my brush and I'm painting a blobby circle Use plenty of water. Now I'm going to take another brush and dip it into, I'm using the onion skin ink. It's going to bloom and pretty much will be held in by the borders of the circle made of water. Now you just want to play around with these and uh, they will continue to, to bleed and blossom. And when it dries, you'll get something altogether different. I'm going to, I like this with the negative space, but I'm actually going to add a little bit of 
some ink to this. This is the tea ink. And I'm going to dip it into, I'm actually going to kind of flick it in here so that it starts working inside of some of that onion skin ink. Add a little bit here for some contrast. I'm still leaving plenty of the negative space. But now we have a couple of colors. I think this looks a little bit like a galaxy in a good way. It's important when you're trying these techniques that you use different weights and finishes of paper. But in my experience, I have found that with these uh, techniques where you want the, the ink to move and, and pool, it does better with a smooth surface. Now that is opposed to say, this is a heavy watercolor paper that has a cold press rough finish. And that's very pretty. But in my experience, it inhibits the ink from moving as much as I would like. So try different ones, but today I am using a smooth finish. This is a version of the, uh, it's a still a wet on wet, and it's a different version because I'm starting off my wet with the tea ink. So I'm just making another blobby circle. And I'm using plenty of the tea ink. Now I'm going to dip my brush into the onion skin ink. And just add big old droplets here and there. If you want to, you can drag the color with your brush. Uh, that's an option. But as I said, these are going to continue to grow. And I think it's kind of fun to just see where they'll take themselves. But that's another technique you can use. And I'm going to let these dry. Here is a version of the circles, and it's a little bit different because we're going to start out with wet, being the walnut ink, but I'm going to play around with it using a different kind of a wet. This is just alcohol. It's isopropyl rubbing alcohol. And I've loaded up my pipette, my eyedropper, with the alcohol, and I'm going to use that to play around with the ink. And that alcohol displaces the ink and makes these super cool patterns. Almost like a, it makes it look like a, like a rock, like agate. And I'm just going to let that bloom and grow and go where it will and see what it looks like when it's dry. Here are some bigger abstract pieces. These are also done with a wet on wet technique. That is the paper is wet, then adding the wet ink, moving it around, letting it pool and, and go where it will and then dry. Now, when you're using a wet paper, it will sometimes want to buckle and bend. Since the whole point is for the ink to move, I'm not too concerned about that. But if you want more control, you can always take some masking tape or even a washi tape and put your paper down onto a flat surface. In this case, I am using a book cover. 
Now I'm going to take a flat brush and some water and paint the surface with water. Lots of it. And again, this paper is one with a smooth finish. Now I'm going to take my pipette again, but instead of alcohol, I've, I've emptied that out and I'm going to load it up with ink. This is the avocado ink, avocado pit. And I'm just going to move this around in big old pieces like that. And then I'm going to move it. And it's always going to be different. It's always going to be a mystery. If you want to control it a little bit, you can use your, your brush or pull some color out but I'm just going to leave that there and let it dry, see where the ink wants to go and pool and what that looks like. Here are some of the abstract pieces that have dried. This, these are just the uh, wet on wet with the, the tea ink and the onion skin ink. This is just the onion skin, one tone. And then these are also a, a mix of two tones. This is one with the walnut ink and the alcohol resist. Here are some that I made previously. These are Walnut, onion skin, and avocado ink with the alcohol resist. And these are just some of the um, wet on wet that I put in my mini, art, mini ink journal. And this is one tone, two tones, and then this one has the tea, the, ava, the onion skin, and the walnut. So we've got three tones there. You can use these as journal pages, embellishments. I actually cut out a few of the, the little ones, and these would make you know, nice embellishments on another piece. You can also draw into them and let the patterns and shapes suggest a drawing to you. This one already looks like pretty cute little guy here. So that could be the beginning of a character. Could make a landscape. And these are just some abstract flowers working into the, the pieces that are already there. Here are some of the larger pieces. This is one, the one with the edges that were taped off. Still got a little smudge, but a nice line there. Uh, this is one using the onion skin ink. And its edge was only defined by the water that I painted into a rectangle. Wet on wet. That water held it in there. Same thing here. I love these so much. And uh, 
I actually have a couple of these just like this framed in my office in my apartment. But you can also use them as a beautiful, fun, mysterious base for a journal page or some other mixed media piece. Just play around with it. Have fun. I hope this has given you some ideas for adding abstract ink techniques to your own work. Please check out the link below if you'd like to find out more about my new online course, How to Make Four Botanical Inks and use them in your pages. Please join me tomorrow. I'm going to have a short, kind of a trailer for this new online course explaining more about it. Until then, get up and go make something. <laughs>